Uh oh. That's all right. We're going to actually make us a corner clamp. A couple degrees out of square, right? <laughs> hey, I'm Laura, and we're here at First Build. Now, Randy taught me Welding 101 about this time last year, and he's been challenging me to come back and lay some more feed and get better. So I'm back here today, going to see what I remember and see how I can get better. Today, I've got Laura set up. We're going to run uh, We're going to run some bead on some thin wall tubing. One of the hardest parts about doing tubing is burn through. Let's get started. Got her vest on, ready to go. Hair. Hair, get that hair up. <laughs> oh yeah, I don't want to do the you hot don't dance. Want, you don't want to do the hot dance, so we're getting it around the deck, beautiful. Uh, I got my gloves, I know I've got to check this for number 10. That is correct. Make sure you're on setting number 10, because we're going to be migging. Put the helmet on, we don't need our gloves yet. Take the torch. More? Nope, that's pretty good. That's right. uh, It's not going to be perfect as long as it'll pass gas. If you watch 101, you got to be able to have gas pass through there. You'll notice she's got about nine inches of stick out. Oh yeah, way too much, right? Way so. too much. So you're going to go back to about the width of the nozzle. Down. Yeah, the, yeah. yeah there you go. There perfect, go. perfect, perfect. And we're going to set up a square joint. So what I'd like you to do, Laura, is to set those up at right angles down at the end. That's correct. And we're going to run a we're gonna run a butt joint. Butt joint is when you've got two pieces of metal stuck together on the same plane. So, and the good thing about tubing is when she stands that up, then we're gonna run a T-joint down that surface. Now, you really have a choice to run your T-joint in a vertical, or we can turn the part up and run it in a horizontal. We always choose, if given the opportunity to run it in the horizontal, that way it's easier. If you're trying to push a wet puddle uphill, it takes a little extra technique, so for a beginner, much better to stand the part up and actually run the joint in the horizontal. We want to try to weld everything we can in the horizontal. So, okay. so are we ready to weld? All right, there we go. Grab your gun and take the stance. Make sure you're in what you think is a comfortable position, if you remember. So we're going to need it up a little bit more like this. Now, can you see the joint? Yep. And then you can see where you're going. So we're going to walk right down through there, right? So it doesn't hurt to take a couple extra movements to make sure you got that down. On this particular joint, on a flat joint like that, it's not so much cursive ease as much as it is maybe a little zigzag pattern okay. like you're sewing. We're trying to fill in the gap. So we're going to kind of walk it back and forth. Okay. You are going to have to bridge that gap back and forth. So okay. it will be a little challenging. Before I started, I did check the machine and got it set to uh, 210 and 16 volts. We're welding 075 metal. So just made sure that we were on the right, the right settings for that. Look at that. Holy cow, that's smooth. That's really nice. No burn through. Uh-oh. That's all right. You're going to go back to where your puddle is, somewhere close to where the bead is. All right, that's good. So you filled it right in. That was a great recovery. Going hot. Yep. There you go. I like the technique. That was good. Moving quickly. Good. Nice. Look at the glow. Oh, my gosh. So, uh, it looks like I did a pretty good job for my second time welding. I give you a B minus. Oh, come on. <laughs> yeah. Those beads are, are very well done. I just saw somebody out there make a frame for the living room, and, and that takes a little more, I would think, than just kind of freehanding. So, let's check. So, freehanding, obviously fabricating on a flat table. Let's check and see right, yeah. freehanded how we look. And you can see we're, we're off <laughs> by quite a bit. Now, so if you look. We're just yeah, a couple degrees out of square, That's right? a B minus. I'll, I'll give you that. Okay. <laughs> We've got some really cool equipment here at First Build available to you, the general public, to come in and work alongside us. Go over to the water jet. We're going to make us a square, and then we're going to use it over here, and you'll see how much better we can do on this joint with this square that we're getting ready to make. We have the plans for this square here. You can make this clamp yourself. So let's head over to the water jet. We'll make this really cool clamp. I, I mean, you had, the, you had the other origin stuff set, so. Yeah, I, we're good. We're going to tack this thing in. <laughs> All right, so we just got this off the water jet. I've tacked it into place. It's ready to go. It's good and square. It's got a 45 and 290s on it. So Laura's going to go ahead and run the beads around the inside. So let's head back to the table and get her to weld that. 
Man, that is B plus <laughs> plus. We can do a couple more on this side, and then we're gonna see how square it is. Too far away. That's an F. All right, so Laura just finished tacking this up. I actually tacked this together using a squaring fixture on our production table. Is it gonna draw a little bit? Probably so, but it's a squaring fixture for tubing around here. So let's, let's throw some tubing up against it. Um, we're gonna clamp it. Now I am gonna, we are gonna get clamps out this time. These are clamping, clamping pliers and we use them everywhere here at First Build. So um, they've got swivel pads on the end of them. We're gonna use that to clamp your part up against this framing square. We're gonna use this square that we just built and we're going to put our clamps on it we're going to hold that nice and firm so when you weld it we'll let that weld cool and then we'll take it apart so clamping it up is going to just add to its dimensional stability the holes are cut in there and they just happen to be big enough for our welding pads to fit down inside of theirs they're designed so that the tab or the pad of this weld clamp can actually fit down there and get a little bit closer to the center of the closer to the center the more stable we're going to be when we clamp up so we cut some slots in our our clamp, I mean in our uh, corner jig. So we're gonna lay this out, snug this up nice and tight. Snug up. Now we've got a truly square corner. Nice and tight, you gotta have that. The closer the better. Now we're gonna run complete across from one side to the other. Pull that up nice and snug. You got, there you go, perfect. <laughs> All right, here we go. Yep. Unclamp it. Go ahead and unclamp. There you go. Same way with that. You can use this to help stand that up. You can clamp this on the end of the table and actually clamp this to it so that we can be sure we keep it. Now, we've already got a good strong weld on that side and that side. So the odds of it wanting to walk over are very slim. So, but I just want to demonstrate that you can use this square now that we've built it. You can do 45s with it, you can do 90s, but uh, handy, handy. All right, we're gonna run a fillet. Uh oh, that's some pretty good welds for somebody that's only had the torch in their hand two times. So. Uh, Jump on the comment section below and let us know what you think. Uh, outstanding job. All right, but the real test is, did I get it square? So let's test, right? right? So we've got just a standard framing square. I see no light between there. Woo! That is dead square. Yep. So our fixture works very well. You can come down and make that fixture on the water jet. You're very simple, simple to do. Um, the plans are already on the water jet. You can make that fixture and look at the uh, look at the corner. Works. So, works well. Obviously, the uh, the welder uh, did an extraordinary job putting a bead down to make it square. Next time, if you saw Laura actually penetrated and burnt a hole in this side of this tubing, she recovered very well. But we're going to cover some techniques for what to do when you pop a hole, how to jump back over and pick it up and continue on through. So a lot more to come on the channel, so stay tuned and we'll continue, uh, continue teaching welding. So, I came in on my second time welding a little cocky, not going to lie. <laughs> thought, you know, how hard could this be? It is hard. It reminds me I need to come and practice more and uh, use the tools available to be able to do a, a better job. So thanks for teaching. You are absolutely welcome. Come see us. We're here. Don't forget, hit the subscribe button. And oh, by the way, leave her a grade down in the comments sections. I'm dying to hear what you think she did. <laughs>